Now, leukemia cutis, which is basically, I tend to use this term to, for some variation of acute myeloid leukemia in the skin. So, you know, technically CLL, chronic lymphocytic leukemia involving the skin would also be leukemia cutis, but I, I feel like that is a much different um, uh, clinical situation and much different like behavior and prognosis. So, so I like to just call that CLL, SLL involving skin. Um, and I feel like leukemia cutis to me is I usually personally like to reserve it for like AML or some variation thereof involving the skin, relatively serious and, and oftentimes urgent uh, diagnosis that needs to be dealt with uh, expediently. So the, you could say, well, look, this looked a lot like that tumor stage MF. It's just blue cells filling the dermis. And that's true. So when you see blue cells filling the dermis, especially this pattern, this diffuse sheets with, I find this really helpful, some strands of the background reticular dermal collagen still intact. What this tells me is these cells are very loose and discohesive. They're not like nests of tumor cells that are, you know, invading between and pushing stuff out of the way and making a bunch of reaction to it. These are cells that are just, just like kind of like a bag of loose cells poured into the dermis and filling up all the gaps, all the spaces. So it starts out sometimes it just subtly inter in, uh, intercalate between the collagen bundles. And then as it gets more cellular, it kind of pushes the collagen out of the way, but you can still see some of that collagen framework left behind. So to me, that's very characteristic of hematopoietic malignancies in the skin. Leukemias and lymphomas do that, particularly leukemia cutis does it, but also lymphomas can do that same thing. So I find when I see that pattern low power, leukemia cutis, first thing that comes to my mind, but of course, a, a wide variety of other round blue cell malignancies, you know, could potentially present like this too. So here's what I'm talking about. You can see the cells going between the collagen bundles. Now, if you pick out any one of these cells, they kind of have a little bit bean-shaped nucleus, if you can see that there. They got a little cytoplasm, a little bit like kind of histiocyte looking. Obviously, way too cellular, and there's, there's mitotic activity in here. Um, but uh, individual cells kind of, to my eye, look like histiocytes. Now, the reason for that is that a lot of the times when you have acute myeloid leukemia involving the skin, it's usually one of the forms of acute myeloid leukemia that has some monocytic differentiation. Remember, monocytes are the, the, hematopo uh, the hematopoietic lineage that macrophages and histiocytes are derived from. Those are cells that tend to go to the skin and home into the tissue, right? And so the immature forms of those, the leukemic forms that have some histiocyte-like or monocyte-like derivation, like acute myelomonic, um, excuse me, acute myelomonocytic leukemia or acute monocytic leukemia. It's the monocyte forms of the immature cells that tend to be the ones that go to the skin. Even in patients that have myeloid and monocytic cells, one of my heme path friends, Dr. Jeanette Ramos, who I, I've done a video with about, about lymph, uh, leukemias and, and other heme path things in the blood, um, for the pathologist watching this, uh, I'll put a link down below. You'll probably find it very useful. She's a, a brilliant, amazing teacher, really wonderful. Um, probably a little bit less relevant to the dermatologist watching this. But in any case, she was the one who said that even in the patients that have both myeloid and monocytic types of blasts, uh, it's the monocytic ones that tend to be the ones that go to the skin. So to me, I like that because that explains they look a lot histiocytic-like. So I think that's helpful. And they tend to stain with histiocyte-like markers. They can stain with CD4 and some of the other markers. One of the problems is that, you know, in the bone marrow, blasts tend to stain with CD34 and CD117, or also known as C-kit. But a lot of times when blasts get into the skin in leukemia, um, and maybe it's because they're more monocytic derivation, I don't know, this is a little bit beyond where, where my knowledge goes, um, they tend to not stain with those typical blast markers that are often used in the bone marrow as much. So there's the problem is, is that there's not one like perfect stain for leukemia cutis. So I, I often do kind of a panel of stains, including myeloperoxidase. Um, I try to keep in mind, uh, I'll keep in mind uh, that lymphomas can sometimes look like this. So if I'm not sure what it is, I might include a CD3 and a CD20 to cover B and T cells, a myeloperoxidase to try to recognize some blastic derivation. Um, and then also um, there is a really rare thing uh, called uh, blastic plasma cytoidendritic cell neoplasm, which to my eye looks, I, I don't know how to tell it apart. I've rarely, rarely seen it, but it looks to me just like leukemia cutis and it'll stain kind of like, except it stains also with CD56, I believe, and also um, uh, plasma cytoidendritic cell marker CD123. Really esoteric stuff is very aggressive tumor and rare, and I think easy to miss if you're not thinking of it. So anyway, you can go and read uh, up about that, about the staining panels. Uh, the big thing is if I'm if I if they don't know if the patient has leukemia and I see this, 
they need to get a white count right away. Get a CBC, check what the, the peripheral smear looks like. Because most of the time when patients have leukemia cutis and have AML, they either have known AML or they, they just recently diagnosed or they're having a recurrence, something like that, okay? It's pretty rare, although very, very rarely it can be the presenting sign that this show up with leukemia cutis before they have obvious leukemic involvement of the blood. And extremely rarely you can have leukemia cutis without actual circulating leukemia. You can have leukemia cutis or you can have AML show up as a mass in other uh, other organ systems actually without circulating leukemia. And in fact, a friend of mine uh, back when I was a residency had that happen, had an internal mass that uh, it kind of coincidentally discovered they had some kind of vague symptoms and it was AML um, and they didn't have um, any at the time any uh, involvement of elsewhere in the body, which is very strange and weird. So. So um, that's uh, one thing to keep in mind. So if I have any doubt about AML or leukemia, the main thing I want to check the history. If they don't have a history, then I want to have them get work up, get a CBC, find out, okay? Especially if I'm uncertain. On this case, this looks like slam dunk. And these are the, the atypy of the cells close up here. Uh, just to show you again, they kind of look histiocytoid, but very atypical. Now though, what about this? This is a very, very subtle example of leukemia cutis. In this case, actually was fatal. This is acute myelomonocytic leukemia. I mean, man, that could, that could be like inflammatory at first glance. The thing is, is when you look closer from lower power, I think I didn't put the low power picture in here, but from low power, this would just look kind of a little bit like perivascular lymphocytes and maybe some scattered, you know, EOs in here. But at higher look, the cells are a bit bigger, a bit more atypical than lymphocytes. And again, if you struggle with that and you're starting out, it is, it is subtle. And that's why I show this because it can be very subtle sometimes. So when I see larger cells in the dermis, I always want to know what those are. There's plenty of benign reasons to have scattered large cells or even some larger cells around vessels. You can have histiocytes, you can have reactive lymphocytes, immunoblasts, the CD30 positive reactive uh, T and B cells, like I've mentioned earlier. Sometimes you can have large scattered cells in the dermis that are reactive fibroblasts or myofibroblasts, uh, uh, like in the setting of you know, granulation tissue and other reactive things. So there's a variety of benign things, but when I see big cells that are a little atypical in the dermis, I generally like to find out what they are. Um, so I'll sometimes consider doing a CD68 and a, maybe a smooth muscle actin if I'm thinking of myofibroblasts. Obviously, I wouldn't think of that here, but um, and a CD30. And I may, if I have any doubt, throw on some, some leukemic markers like myeloperoxidase, okay? So um, it can be very subtle. And in these very subtle cases, this often means I need to talk to the dermatologist and say, hey, I'm a little worried that just maybe this could be subtle leukemia cutis. Could you get a CVC and follow the patient closely? And there's another topic we're not going to delve into today, but there's a variant of sweet syndrome. Sweet syndrome, as you guys know, is you know, neutrophils fill in the dermis, but there's a variant called histiocytoid sweet syndrome. And my understanding of that disease is that basically it's like sweets, but instead of totally well-developed neutrophils, the neutrophils are a little bit more left shifted. They look a little bit more like bands. And because of that, they can kind of resemble, you know, myeloid cells are what, you know, this, the precursor cell that eventually becomes neutrophils and a lot of the other white blood cells, right? So an immature neutrophil is a myeloid cell, basically, right? So there's a, a spectrum of features there that they can overlap. And those will stain with myeloperoxidase. And they look a fair bit like leukemic blasts sometimes, um, usually not as atypical. But as, so when I think something's histiocytoid sweets, I usually want them to follow the patient closely, get a CBC, keep a very close eye on them, make sure they respond to therapy like you would expect sweets to. And if not, go back and biopsy again, uh, just because I'm always very worried because I think uh, histiocytoid sweets and leukemia cutis can sometimes be very difficult to tell apart, um, if not impossible, uh, microscopically. So anyway, just to throw that out there, it's an important thing to keep in mind because you don't want to overcall it, but uh, definitely it's one of those things that's that's very challenging. So you can, I'm certainly not an expert on that, but you can go read some more about histiocytoid suites because it is it can be pretty scary looking. All right, and here's a closer look at these uh, myeloid blasts in this case of, of um, AML.